702 day. Someone asked me on Twitter why this Ingonyama Trust issue matters so much. It's not as if it affects people at the center of the economy, uh, went the question. Why pay it so much attention when it really is, at best, a marginal concern? He couldn't be more wrong. See, there's been a lot of me, a lot of been, there's been a lot of misdirection on the land question in recent days. And it was quite extraordinary to hear Pule Mabe, the ANC's national spokesperson, on television last night telling me that his party wants to focus uh, this uh, issue on the 87% of the land in this country that is not under traditional leadership, because he says that is the land that was stolen. It was perhaps a great argument for why the recent suggestion that history be made compulsory in schools is possibly a good one. Traditional leaders were, as Barnim Tomboti calls them, the handmaidens of the apartheid state. They knew all too well that to hang on to the scraps that had been left by successive colonial and apartheid governments, they had to cooperate or lose everything. The Bantustans were created from traditional leadership structures and were headed by people, whether it was Mangope or Matanzima, or indeed even Prince Buteles. They were all from royal households with recognized claims to leadership roles. So when the high-level panel led by Khalema Mutlante made its observations about how uh, land under, say, the Ingonyama Trust is run, for example, it underscored the fact that, as in many other examples, traditional leaders are indeed those village tin pot dictators with absolute sway over the people they rule over. And make no mistake, they don't govern, they rule. The ANC-led alliance yesterday moved to give a blanket assurance to the Zulu king, and in fairness to them, not because it fears the person of the king, but because it recognizes his absolute power over those he calls his subjects. This is recognized, in fact, by all the major political parties in the country. That's why the leadership of the ANC after Nasrek went to go uh, on a tour of royal households after December. And, of course, the visit to Ulundi receiving uh, the most prominence. Uh, not about to be outdone, Musi Maimane and the DA also showed up on the king's doorstep. And what of our red revolutionaries, the self-styled champions of the poor and working class, the Red Berets? Ever the masters of political theatres, theater, they presented the king with cattle at his last birthday and last week promised to work with the very traditional leaders we know, and you would think surely they know, oppress their people. So why does it all matter? Well, as Stephen Friedman points out in his column today in the Business Day, 12 million people live under traditional leaders in this country. 12 million. That's probably more than all of Gauteng. That is a lot of votes. And that's what this is about. It's not about principle or caring about traditional values. It's about power and expedience and to hell with the poorest of the poor that everyone always swears they care about. That's the last thing on the minds of the politicians. Because you see, such is the power of the chiefs that the people will vote according to what they believe will please them. That's what this is about. It's not about culture. It's not about land. You know, you can fool some people sometime. But if you're really, really lucky, you can, feel, you can fool all the people all the time. That's politics 401, my friend.